Hi guys. Cheese. How are you? I am coming to you live from my office. I have a meeting in 10 minutes, so I won't be coming to you live very long, but I am logging on because I just wanted to unpack with you some things that I've been feeling and experiencing and like, man, I only have 10 minutes, nine minutes at this point, but I am just going to say that like, I know I posted a couple weeks ago that I feel like I've been like going under, I've been under attack. Um, and for those of you like, girl, what does that mean? Some of y'all like church to church, you already know what it means, but other people are kind of like, what does that mean? Um, I can just tell that I have been having to fight to hang on to the revelation of who I am in God and fight to hang on to the revelation of what I'm supposed to do in the earth. And if you have been experiencing that as well, then maybe this quick, short little live will help you as well. But um, I have been going through this process of like figuring out like my word, like what is my word in this season and how do I navigate the stress and the magnitude of my responsibilities. And in the process of doing that, um, I have been reminded about God's faithfulness and God's confidence in our ability to navigate storms, not just because we have it all together, but what can happen when we lean into God, when we lean into his wisdom over our own, when we trust his vision. And so I'm going to backtrack a little bit and then I'm going to speed it up and then I'm going to get off of here so y'all can go back to your life. But, um, you know, I think that, you know, wig coming off was powerful for many people and humorous for some people, um, embarrassing for some people. And um, I was vacillating between all of these different things. And I think part of the reason why I was vacillating between feeling all of those things, like the moments of, um, you know, feeling honored that God would use the foolish things of the world to really do something transformational, the shame of like being made fun of and the embarrassment of showing up in a way that I would not have chosen. And uh, the reason why I had to navigate all of those things is because that particular Sunday was my first Sunday preaching at the Potter's House Dallas without my husband there, without my parents there. And they are very, you know, foundational for me and um, to stand in that moment man okay so to like stand in that moment not on my own but really relying upon God and wanting to show up in a way that I felt you know honored the reverence of that moment and the reverence of the word God had given me. Then I had this really awkward word about body and feeling things in your body and how the Holy Spirit can work through your body. And so I'm navigating like all of these different things and I felt insecure about the message. And then I ended up you know, finally grabbing a hold of the message and walking in confidence with the message and then to leave that moment feeling like a little uncertain about like, how does this, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make that noise every time. Like, how does this moment affect that moment? So I just was in my head um, because that required a level of vulnerability and, and insecurity that um, made a new demand on who I am. What God has revealed to me about that moment and about myself is ultimately how God's going to use what God's going to use. You can do all of your studying. You can do all of your thinking about how you need to do it and how it needs to sound and how it needs to show up. And at the end of the day, God's going to use what God's going to use. And if God uses something as simple and as silly sounding as I took my wig off and for some kind, it tore down these idols, it liberated women, like as silly as that sound, considering I'm studying Greek and Hebrew and the context of the scriptures and what it means in biology and psychology, I'm doing all of these things. And at the end of the day, God's like, I just want the simplicity of your authenticity and the pureness of your heart. From the pure heart, I study. From my authenticity, I try to show up in the moment. And God gets to choose what has the most power on it. I say that to say, um, I had to get to that place after a few weeks of like navigating all of those things. And I'm having to arrive to that place as I prepare for Womney Evolve 23. 
um, the hour conference we're having at Globe Life Field. I hope you're registered. I want you to come. But, you know, I feel the magnitude of this moment. And I feel the responsibility of not making it about me. I feel the responsibility of making it pure. I feel the responsibility about being intentional and making sure that as many people know about it as possible. And um, it feels heavy sometimes. And I just got finished with having a team meeting and it feels heavy on my team. And I was writing down some of the reasons why it feels heavy. And the first thing that like came to mind was like, I don't wanna mess this up. Like if this feels heavy, because I don't want to mess this up. Have you ever had to do something that you knew God had put you up to do, <laughs> allowed you to step up to the plate to get it done, and in the process of God stepping you up to the plate to get it done, you had to think to yourself, like, I don't want to mess this up. I understand how important this is. I understand what is connected to this moment. Like, I am not even like trying to say like, I don't wanna mess up this opportunity because I want another opportunity. Like I am planning this conference, like I may never get a chance to do this again. And if I never get a chance to do this again, what has to happen in this moment? It has to be pure, it has to be intentional. It has to recognize the general, the generational implications of what ta is taking place in this room. And I just want you to know that as you're coming to conference that we're releasing speakers soon, like we're doing all of the things to try and make it easy for you to understand whether or not this is something that you want to be at. But what I am doing that you cannot see is happening in my heart. It's happening in how I view who you are. I'm asking God for insight and wisdom about what you're up against. I'm asking God to make my hands pure, my hands clean and my heart pure enough to facilitate this environment for you and your family. I'm asking God to unify my team and to stretch my team in ways we didn't even know what was possible. I can't promote that. I don't know how to put that on a flyer, but I'm telling you, like we're doing all the logistical and practical, but what is most important is that we are doing what is necessary to facilitate glory. And in order for that glory to be facilitated, we recognize that we have to go through our own healing. We have to go through our own process of asking God to show up in our lives, to convict us, to change us, to transform us so that we look as close to Jesus as humanly possible with our scars, with our our shame with our past we're asking God to make us so close to Jesus that the moment you step into that facility you can tell that we prayed for you to get here we desired that God would meet you here and that we have done the internal work to facilitate the breakthrough that you experience and so I just wanted to let you know that it's not a game um, I just want you to know that it's heavy and it's supposed to be heavy because it's building us into who we're supposed to be. And I just want you to know that I respect you and God too much to waste your time, to waste your money, to make this a performance when it is supposed to be radical transformation. I respect the devil you're up against. I respect the fact that you are calling in backup when you come to Woman Evolve 23, that it's not, a just, it's not just about being propelled into your destiny, but you're also calling in backup. I need some worshipers with me. I need some prayer with me. I need someone who knows how to get a word from God. Oh, I get chills thinking about that. That when we're in that room, that we are going to be making a declaration that, girl, I'm your backup. And together, if one can chase 1,000 and two can chase 10,000, what can 40,000 of us do? I'm your backup. Like, and I am just becoming your backup right now. I'm doing what I need to do spiritually to make sure that when you count on me, that you are counting on someone who's been in the presence of God, who has lived a life to become more and more like Jesus because you need backup and we got you. Because, ooh, I, you know how I think sometimes, not like a rapper, but things come to me. But what I'm saying is like, you need backup and we got you. So the devil that's been taunting you is gonna have to back up so that you can get up and um and i'm serious about this and i want it to be fun and i want us to have joy but i just want you to know i take this seriously and i can't wait to share with you who's coming to speak and all of the amazing things we're going to do but i wanted you to know that um what we have not shared on a flyer that we have been doing to prepare is what's happening in the spirit and in the soul of our team to make sure that this is a space that you can feel free, delivered, safe, loved, joy, inspired, encouraged, convicted, 
transformed. And um, I can't wait to do it with you. So I love you. I said short little situation. That's as short as I can be. And I love you.